Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, I received a song request uh, about my latest video, so I decided that maybe this justify a part three from our latest videos in Russian uh, uh, principles apply to the baton work for law enforcement. So today we're going to be then uh, working on a part three on a, a series that was originally meant to be uh, two uh, parts only. And, uh, I see around the world that uh, some of the restrictions on the COVID-19 are easing. So I hope that you guys are keeping safe and healthy. And then, well, this is fantastic. And, and I hope really that your lives are slightly going back to normality. Okay, so let's go back to business. And then I got one clarification. I'm not a, a, a wood expert or a carpenter or nothing close. Well, I was told that the internal part of the, the sticks are called the grain. So, awesome. Thank you. Um, so, when you go to a warehouse to choose your uh, Russian stick, I also clarified in my other videos that that one is 120 centimeters long. And where you cut one of those in half, and you're going to have two sticks of 60 centimeters each, which is very very convenient and very close to what the real expandable baton is. So I got, you know, share with my students, actually two pairs of, of, of batons, wooden batons uh, that I made myself, as I explained on my last video. And even though that they are from the same uh, wood, uh, Tasmanian oak, you can actually notice the difference between one and the other. And if I put it close here, Hopefully, okay. focus will be there on the stick. This one is way tighter, the grain. On this one than this one. So, Choose a stick that has a very tight grain in the center that makes the stick heavier even though they are both of the same length this one is heavier than this one and it's also uh, stronger so make your own sticks and you will save uh, a, a, a big chunk of money and you also get the satisfaction satisfaction that you make your own your own uh, training batons training sticks however you want to call them and well the only difference is that you won't have uh, a carry back but do you really need a carry back i don't and if you already have other sticks and you need to take care of your sticks with you you would just pull the ones that you bought from from the shops and that are commercially available and then put your own inside and boom and then you have a carry back for your homemade sticks uh, so that is about the, the the crane on the inner part of the of the wooden sticks Remember the handle is made out of, of uh, ice hockey uh, tape, you can buy that online as well and simulate the, the handle of the, of the real expandable button. Okay, moving on. The other request was to you know, uh, exp uh, explain better how the, the flip with the forearm happens instead of the hand as is taught in, in most uh, police academies. Well, when you are working a uh, with your baton, you know, one single hand, uh, at academy level you are taught to use your other hand you know, and take the blow there. So when you use the, the forearm you have a longer, bigger surface from the tip of your fingers to the tip of your elbows to accurately and quickly go there to protect yourself. If you're aiming only with the hands in a stressful situation you're a fine motor skills goes out the window so chances are you're going to be do, end up doing this so missing your baton okay but when you go with your entire forearm it doesn't matter that you got it here or here or here or here or here or here you're going to be there okay we don't close the other hand just in case that you get hit there or the strike hit here and it slides towards your hand so you are cutting by half the chances of getting your hands injured, right? You're already having 
uh, one hand grip here, so you could be hit there. If you put another one, then you have two hands exposed to the impact. But when you're using a flat surface, uh, it's like a slide up there and not hitting your arm or your hand. So we're minimizing that risk, cutting it by half, 50% exposure, only the gripping hand. Okay. Um, and the other thing is that he, here you are, the academy level, you are tough to take the full blow, the full impact on your baton. Even though the baton is made of a, a heat treated carbon steel, which is very strong, but you're going to be taking or absorbing, your body will be absorbing that massive impact on you. So in Sistema, we don't block. You know, there's three ways that you can take a, an impact or a strike thrown on you, and that is by evasion. Okay? Evading altogether the strike. That is the best option and the first one that you always have to look for. The second one is by deflection. So you make a slight contact and then you deflect most of the, the kinetic energy away from your body. And the third one and the last one is um, is a blocking, which is taking the full impact on, on you. So when you reach out you know, to that blow, either this is a kick, a punch, being uh, hit with a with a with a piece of metal uh, or a baseball bat or a cricket bat or whatever, you want to reach out the closest to the hands, the gripping hands of your of your opponent or your attacker, and then deflect that strike away from your body. All right, so coming from above, you reach out, make contact, slight contact, and deflect it away from your body. It's also a suspension work, just like I said before, the suspension system of a vehicle. You know, you've got a chalk absorber, you're going to be absorbing that impact here with your arms, with your shoulders, with your torso, and with your hip, okay? deflecting that strike away from you. All right? Hope that clarifies uh, that. So, moving on. Now, I was asked also by a law enforcer if I can explain in more details so it will be more uh, specific on, on how this strike happened, how we strike with the baton. Okay, so we got our training standard baton here. So let's say that we deploy the baton. The baton has three sections. Now in a police academy, you are instructed to strike with the last third, okay, which is this section here to here. All right, there is a reason for that. Okay, you got a larger impact surface area, so less kinetic energy that's going to be transferred to the target area, all right? If you are specifically told to not to hit with the tip of the baton, the reason why is because that is the point that concentrates more kinetic energy at the point of impact, okay? So if you're hit with, it, with the tip, which is this you know, piece of steel at the tip, you're going to cause more damage on the, uh, on the target. All right, so you're instructed to use then the last third of the baton or this flat area, okay? There's more kinetic energy toward the end, less towards the handle, okay? Uh, but if you live in a, in, a, in a jurisdiction where you, if you are a civilian, you are uh, legally able to own and carry an expandable baton with you for self-defense, well, you're a civilian, you can pretty much start with whatever part of your baton you want. Okay, having said that, remember that you are responsible in a court of law of every strike that you deliver with your expandable baton or every use of force that you apply. And you have to justify not only that you acted on self-defense, but also the amount of force that you use. All right, so bear that in mind of the legal consequences of your actions. Okay, so put this second aside and we grab our timber baton again. Okay, so what happened when you strike? Remember, this is the Russian uh, way of operating the, the baton. So we're using Russian Sashka, the sword principles, and you know, the strikes are with a wave. So the same way that we strike. No, with the weak motion, okay? Okay? being here, it's called the handle of the whip, and this is the whip, and our fist is the tip of the whip, right? So we're striking in a whipping motion. Okay? Now when we add the baton to the hand, now we got a longer whip. So the tip of the whip is transferred from the fist to the tip 
of the baton or the last third of the expandable baton if you are a law enforcer. So in this case, we are doing our shield, no? Front shield and then you come here to deliver the strike, okay? We're gonna deliver the strike on a whipping motion. It's like the same that you do with your, with your, with your, with your empty hands uh, strikes. Uh, an analogy that I use to explain this is, let's say that you, that you dip your, your baton in water and you get the first third of the baton uh, wet no, with water, okay? You dip it into water, all this part is wet, and then you are trying to shake the water off your baton, all right? But you want those drops to fly towards the, the or splash the target area, all right? So if you're doing it in a, a, a low motion in a very exaggerated way, so it's more, 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 more visible, so there will be something like this, okay? I want the, those splashes of water to get into the target area. So you are concentrating all that kinetic energy that forms and is loaded into the tip of the last third of your baton to be transferred into the target. All right? So dip it in water and shake the water off the tip of your baton. When I do it in a fast motion on the punching bag, it's not as noticeable. But if I do it slow, it's more noticeable, all right? The reason is that when you're training, you want to do it in a, in a, in a not only a, a slow, in a slow motion, but also you want to do it in a very visible and exaggerated way, so you get used to the motion. But as you uh, uh, increase in your skills, you want to more make uh, those mo movements more compact. It's like you have a, 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 a computer file and you want to send it on an email and it's too large to be sent on an email so you, you, you compress it, you, know, you, you zip the file. Attach it to your email, send it and then the recipient have to unzip it or, or open it again in order to be able to open the file. So you, you compress it, you, 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 you make your, your movement more, more discreet more in disguise because as I've said in other of, of my videos we, we don't want to represent a threat to our opponent okay so your movement has to be natural non-aggressive non-provoking okay so we do it in an exaggerated way now doing our shields making big motions with the hips with the arms upper shield you know side shields back shields, front shield, and then we strike. Boom, 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 or a whipping motion. We're delivering the tip of the stick. Delivering the tip of the stick, now sending splashes of water from the tip of the stick towards the target. So I'm going to do it now on the punching bag very slow and then I'll do it a little bit faster. faster. More compressed. The motion is still there on my shoulders, on my arms, on my hips, where I do it very compressed. more how to deliver strikes with the baton 
the Russian way of the walk, uh, walking with the baton in a whipping motion, no? walking with the last of the striking with the last third of the baton or the tip of the baton. Boom. Boom. All right. Hope you enjoy uh, the video today and learn something new. And it was more clarifying and answer the question. Ah, forgot one thing. The other, the other reason why you blow with your forearm is in case that your other hand is busy holding something, right? So if you're using your hand here, then your hand is busy with the baton. But if your arm is somewhere else, because you're holding, let's say in this case, the pen, I have my pen on this side because I'm attempting to strike also with the pen, and I need to blow with two arms, then that work of blocking with the forearm and all this area here doesn't stop me for, from having something in my hand. So I can still maintain holding to whatever item is in my hand while performing this type of shielding with two, with two arms, all right? So you can be holding something and it doesn't disrupt your baton work, all right? Huh? Hope you had fun and you learned something again and well i will see you on my next video thank you very much bye bye